Hello and welcome back to the Find Tutorials. In this fourth episode, we're going to look at test-driven development and how we can build a user interface by defining how it should function before we actually code it. So, as before, we could start with a simple user interface. We're going to build a counter to demonstrate the concepts today. And as you can see, I have a basic window defined, the title's counter, and the content is simply a zero. But as we're going to be looking at test-driven development, I've created a test file as well. And let's start there instead. So we have an empty test file. And the first thing that I would like to do with this is to create the very basic test for a counter. Now, I think that the simplest thing would be that a counter starts at zero. So we'll create a test case for that. Starts at zero. As with all Go tests, we will pass in the testing context. And that's our first test defined. To be able to test the counter, we'll need a new type that will be able to hold its state. To do that, we will simply initialize a new type that doesn't yet exist. A new counter. Now, that is not going to succeed because, in fact, the code won't compile. To fix that, we should go and declare what a counter is in our main code. So here I will define the counter type. Currently there's nothing in it, but we would like a new counter function that returns a new type. And in this, we will create a new instance of this counter type and return it. And if we save that file, then our test should be happy. Of course, we haven't used the counter. We could assign that to no value and the error would go away, but let's move on with the test. And what we want to do is check that the starting value is in fact zero. So we would need to imagine where that would be. Let's consider an output label that we'll call out. And a label would have a text field. We want to check whether or not it is zero. So if the value is not zero, we should error the test. Now, the error that we're seeing is because there is no output label defined in our counter. So let's go and add that. And now that we have an output label, our test is not going to complain. And we could try running it. Of course, that's failing because we haven't actually set up an output variable in our main code. So here, when we are creating the counter, we should set what that label should be. We'll create a new label and set the initial value to zero save that file and go back to our test again. Now this could succeed, so we'll rerun our test. Excellent, so our initial in output is testing successfully. Now we should consider the next most complicated test, which would be if our counter increments, it should have the value one. So let's create a new test for that.
we will create another new counter. Now, this time we would like to have it increment, but rather than calling that manually, we'd like to test the user interface that we're building. And for that, the find package has some test utilities. In fact, one of the most helpful functions is tap. So we will tap something, but we haven't defined what that is yet. Let's imagine a button and we'll call it add. For that to pass, we'll need to go back to our main code and define it. Here we have our add button. And whilst we're here, we could in fact initialize it. A new add button, and we pass it a function. For now, we'll pass an empty function. And that is our add button created. If we go back to our test, we are now tapping a button and we want to check the output. So similarly to the zero above, this time we want to check for the value one and the value should have incremented. We'll save that test and you can see it's imported the fine test helpers and now we will run it. As you can see, it has the incorrect incremented value, which shouldn't be a surprise because when the button is tapped, nothing happens. So let's create a new function that might help pass this test. On counter, let's create a function called increment. And when increment is called, the test is expecting the value one to be set. So for now, let's do that. For our output, we'll set the text to one. And for this to succeed, we will pass the increment function to our button callback. And there you can see our inline function was removed because we can simply call a defined function on the counter. If we go back and run our test again, hopefully we'll pass. And there we are. The counter has incremented once and successfully updated its output. Now, obviously we took a shortcut there and we're not complete yet. And so the next test we should write is that we increment twice and show the correct value. So let's take that test and test for incremented twice. We will tap the add button twice and check for the value two with an appropriate error if it doesn't succeed. We'll run this test. And as you can tell, it's failed. We didn't have the correct value. That's not surprising because we weren't actually incrementing. If we go back to our counter, we can see that it's missing any counting capacity. So to do that, we shall add a value that tracks the counter. Now the value will be initialized to the zero integer. So that's going to start at the correct value. However, when we're outputting, we need to now use this value instead. To update to one, we would need to increment the value. So we shall do that there. And then we need to update the output. We'll use the format helper here. And we will set 
the integer format and pass our value c.value. And there we can see format has been imported for us and our code is happy. We'll run the test again and now you can see all of our tests are passing. This is great. We're quite confident that our counter user interface is functioning correctly. We haven't yet actually seen it. So we'll go back to our main code and looking at the main function, which is where our application will run, we will create an instance of the counter. Here we have a new counter being created. And we want to output a user interface here. Instead of the label containing zero, we want to construct a more meaningful content. Let's use the widget vbox, which will help to put two items one above the other on screen. We'll create a new UI variable. Call new v box. And to this, we just pass a list of the items we would like to appear in it. First of all, we would like to see the output of our counter and underneath that, the add button. That's created the widget and then we pass it into set content. We save that file and see that everything is happy. So let's go to the terminal and run the user interface. And that window has loaded. We have now a counter window with our initial counter and the add button appearing underneath. And if we click add, it increments the value. If we click it again, it increments it twice. And quite naturally, three and four times. So there you go. That is test-driven development with the Find Toolkit. As you can see, we created all of the code and tested it, executed correctly before we actually had to load the user interface. So more complicated use cases could be thoroughly tested before we actually have to load an interface and tap through the items on it. I hope that was helpful. Please come back for more tutorials at some point in the future.